Dear students, in this module, we will be covering various social security schemes for elderly and with a special focus on India. The major outlines of this presentation is the definition of social security measures, the context of social security for elderly across different countries and with a particular reference to India, a brief history of the social security systems in industrialized and developing countries and aging in the developing countries, the various policies, programs and major schemes in India for social security of the elderly. And at the end, to summarize what are the social security issues that are confronted by the elderly of India. Let's start with the, the definition of social security. Social security is defined by the International Labour Organization, ILO, as the protection which a society provides for its members through a series of public measures to prevent the social and economic distress that would otherwise be caused by the stoppage or substantial reduction in earnings resulting from sickness, maternity, employment injury, unemployment, invalidity, old age, and death, the provision of medical care and the provision of subsidies for families with children. According to Sir William Beveridge, 1943, it is security of an income to take place of the earnings interrupted by unemployment, sickness or accident to provide for retirement benefit, to provide against the loss of support by the death of either person and to meet exceptional expenditure such as those connected with birth, death and marriage. Let's understand the context in which social security schemes are important. Social security is a basic human right which was recognized by the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights way back in 1948. It encompasses not only the security regarding the basic human needs of food, clothing, shelter, but also health security. Social security schemes usually give priority to income security because generally the basic needs of the vulnerable sections may be satisfied if people have an adequate income. The right to life recognized as a fundamental right by Article 21 of the Constitution of India implies the right to live with human dignity. In the case of India, as we all are aware, India is one-eighth of the world's elderly, thus its strategy for providing social security to the elderly is of global interest. The objective of social security is to provide sustenance to those who cannot work and earn their living due to temporary or chronic reasons. Provision of social security by the state is an intrinsic part of the living standards in most of the developed countries. As, as far as in the less developed countries, however, due to chronic unemployment and extreme deprivation that is inherited in the social structures, the extent of vulnerability is well beyond the risks that are normally covered by the social security schemes that exist in the more developed countries. In developed countries, the elderly are covered by an elaborate system of social security. The nature of issues of the elderly in developing countries is vastly different due to factors such as chronic poverty, unemployment and underemployment as well as the existence of a large informal sector. Hence, the type of social security programs implemented in developed industrialized countries are generally neither appropriate nor economically feasible in poor countries. As far as India is concerned, as you all know, in traditional agricultural societies, families, especially the joint family system with multi-generational co-residents were considered to be a reliable source for providing economic and emotional security needs of the elderly. However, these traditional sources of old age security have come under great strain due to the increased longevity and other widespread demographic 
and the socio-economic cultural changes taking place in these traditional societies. When people and families are not able to make arrangements for the care of the elderly, their needs must be provided for by the society or state either in cash or kind through social insurance and social assistance. Now, let's be very specifically coming to India. The problem is more acute among the poor elderly with deteriorating health conditions. They are unable to work for earning and have hardly, if ever, any savings to fall back upon. Increasing feminization of poverty have further underscored the need to adopt suitably targeted measures that provide social security to the elderly. Like a few other developing countries, the government of India as well as the state governments have undertaken some initiatives in this direction. Presently, the debate on provision of social security to the elderly revolves around the eligibility, coverage, pension amount, appropriate form of assistance to the elderly, food or physical assistance or monetary help, etc., delivery mechanisms, their suitability and the economic implications of such measures. Now, in the case of industrialized developing countries, let's look back how the history of social security systems in these countries are reflecting about. Historically, people relied on families or on the chiefs of clans, tribes, communities, religious groups like kings or other authorities and charitable organizations for their social security needs. In the process of industrialization and urbanization, an increasing proportion of the labor force depended on wage employment and its attendant uncertainties. This adversely affected these informal social security arrangements. Modern social security systems that characterize today were gradually developed in the late 19th century in Europe and other developed countries, especially of the second, after the Second World War. Deprivation of the traditional informal arrangements which provided them social security, occupational groups were formed for mutual help. For instance, friendly societies in the United Kingdom, followed by the establishment of trade unions, are some of the historical milestones when we talk about social security schemes. The efforts of the trade unions and the activities of political parties, as well as radical groups, were largely instrumental in pushing the state to some extent direct degree of responsibility in this respect. Initially, the emphasis was on compensation for occupational accidents and injuries. The social insurance scheme introduced by Bismarck in the Germany during 1883 that covered sickness and pensions. The first unemployment insurance scheme initiated by France way back in 1906, they were important milestones in this regard. Coming to the developing country scenario and uh, focusing on social security for the elderly, it is very important for us to understand that in most of the developing countries, the characteristics of chronic poverty, extreme inequality, high levels of unemployment, underemployment and disguised, disguised unemployment are some of the characteristics. Their labor force participation is predominantly rural, illiterate and undernourished. Hence, the highest priority of the government of these countries is eradication of poverty, creation of jobs and meeting the basic needs of the population which includes health care. For the majority of the people, children are the source of old age security. They better off rely on their savings as well as adult children for support. However, recently, mainly due to rapid aging of the population, there is increasing pressure on the state to take suitable measures to provide social security with focus on the elderly. In the same context, the proportion of elderly in the less developed countries of the world is much less than that in the more developed countries. For instance, 
in 2005, it was 8.2 percent in the case of less developed countries and in the case of more developed countries, it is to the extent of 20.2 percent. What is alarming is the rapid increase in the population of the elderly in less developed countries due to rapid decline in mortality which is resulting in rapid extension of life expectancy. As a result, the projection shows by 2050, one in every five person in the less developed countries will be aged 60 years or older. In China and India, population of the elderly as percent of total population is will be 31 percent and 21 percent respectively, which clearly shows that the speed of aging is experienced more by developing countries and to the extent the developed countries or have already crossed these stages. What is the response of policies, programs and schemes in the area of social security for the elderly in India? As policy reflects is a public statement of the intention of the government to reflect on how the need for taking care of the elderly is very well reflected in a, the national policy for older persons with regard to policy, there is a national policy for older persons in India which was uh, announced way back in 1999. Also, when we talk about some of the policies and uh, actions taken by the government, it is very important to highlight the Maintenance and Welfare of Parents and Senior Citizens Act which was passed in 2007. It was by 2010 that the act was notified by 22 states and in all union territories. It enables senior citizens, if they so desire, to claim maintenance allowance up to 10,000 rupees per month from their children and specifies the claim procedure. The act also envisages establishment and management of old age homes for the needy elderly, provision of geriatric wards, beds in government hospitals, partially or fully funded by the government, facilities like separate queues for senior citizens, action plan for protection of the life and property of senior citizens. It also prescribes penal provision, penal provision for the abandonment of senior citizens to the extent of three months imprisonment or fine up to 5,000 rupees. There is an integrated program for older persons which was operational since 1992. Its objective is to improve the quality of life of senior citizens by providing basic communities like food, shelter, medical care and entertainment opportunities. Under this program, 90% of the project cost is provided to the NGOs for building and maintaining old age homes, daycare centers and mobile Medicare units. The program underwent a revision in 2008 after which several innovative projects for the elderly have been added like daycare centers for Alzheimer's or dementia patients, physiotherapy clinics, helplines, counseling centers, awareness programs for the elderly and caregivers, sensitization programs for children in, children in schools and colleges, formation of senior citizens associations, etc. Financial support for capacity building in government and non-governmental organizations is also provided. After a situation analysis of the elderly in 2011, the scheme was made flexible to cater to the needs of older persons of diverse types like destitutes, slum dwellers, those living in inaccessible areas. Another important initiative is the National Initiative on Care for Elderly. This initiative was launched in 2000 by the National Institute of Social Defense under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment which conducts various courses to prepare skilled and committed professionals to provide services to the elderly. There is a national program for healthcare for the elderly which was launched by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare during the 11th plan period mainly to provide preventive, curative and rehabilitative services to the elderly at various levels of the healthcare delivery system. Next is about strengthening the referral system and also to develop specialized manpower and promote research on geriatric diseases. Under the National Program for Healthcare of Elderly scheme, 
the financed in the ratio of 80% to 20% by center and state provision is made for geriatric infrastructure geriatric wards and opds in hospitals mobile units and regular geriatric clinics in addition to this there are also various facilities services concession schemes provided by various ministries which mainly include for instance initiatives for the general population which are relevant for the needy elderly and which the eligible elderly can benefit from the schemes like narega disability pension schemes rashtriya swasthya bima yojana indira avas yojana etc initiatives that are specifically targeted at the elderly like income tax exemption railways concessions postal savings schemes etc in addition to that as part of uh, food security there is a scheme called annapurna scheme which was launched in 2000 the scheme provides food security to the extent of 35 kilos of food grains per month for free of cost to senior citizens not covered under ignoaps as per the national food security act of 2013 every person belonging to priority households shall be entitled to receive 5 kg of food grains per person per month at subsidized prices specified in schedule i one from the state government under the targeted public distribution system the act specifically states that the provisions of this act shall not preclude the central government or the state government from continuing or formulating other food based welfare schemes there is another scheme called indira gandhi national widow pension scheme introduced in 2009 provides below poverty line widows in the age group of 40 to 64 years which was later revised to 40 to 59 years with a monthly pension of rupees 200 per beneficiary after they attain the age of 60 they qualify for the pension under indira gandhi national old age pension scheme the latest study conducted by united nations population foundation uh, population aid fund unepa under the title building knowledge base on population aging in india the major findings in the area of social security are very important for us to understand for instance 40% of the elderly are aware of the concessions for train travel but barely 9% have availed of them only 4% of the elderly from the lowest wealth quintile reported having benefited from the mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act which is to be expected as ability to work depends on the condition of the person the other facilities like preference for telephone connection income tax benefits and higher interest rate on deposits are relevant only for the better off their utilization by the elderly from the highest wealth quintile was 2 3 and 14% respectively awareness of rashtriya swasthya bima yojana rsby was reported by 11% of bpl elderly but only 7% were actually registered under rsby among non bpl these percentages were 17 and 4% respectively now as a summary after listening to various social security schemes that are carried out by various governments in india we need to know that in india until recently the focus on social security has been only on the organized sector the aadhar card report in 1944 laid the groundwork for a social security system in india pension policies that evolved from 1940s to 60s cover mainly employees in the organized sector however during a sixth and seventh plans it, india recognized this need but there was no central plan allocation the financial provisions made by the seventh finance commission award which allowed the expenditure of 2640 millions in 22 states during 79 84 enable the state governments to pay a monthly pension of rupees 60 to the elderly further this helped to cover only the needy of needy 1.7% of the 60 plus population by the end of the eighth plan all the states and union territories had an old age pension schemes in 1998 4.9 million elderly were received as per help age india study conducted on old age pensions the approach paper for the 12th plan five year plan proposed health care for the elderly along with the pension and insurance reforms to enhance their quality of life what we need to understand here based on the analysis of various programs and schemes is there is a huge gap that exists in terms of awareness 
knowledge, attitudes and the final utilization by the elderly and the other caregivers in India. The important aspect is that we need to bridge this difference and to bring it so that every elderly who are needy can benefit from these social security measures. In this refer, in this context, it is very important for all of us that all stakeholders have to be have to be discussed and also they have to initiate various programs and schemes through which all the elderly can reach out so as to see that they all get correct information that the procedural parts of uh, the various schemes and also to see that the adequate uh, quantum of uh, pensions and other resources have to be provided so that those who are needy elderly in our society can be targeted so as to be see that they get the benefit of these programs and ultimately to enhance their quality of life. Then only we can say that we are able to create an age-integrated society in our country. One of the important aspects which we need to understand is that we have a very good policy which clearly reflects on the government of commitment of the government of India for quality of life of uh, our elderly. The national policy for older persons which has come into existence in 1999 is the first major initiative taken by the government of India for the welfare of the elderly. It provides a broad framework for intersectoral collaboration within the government and between government and non-governmental agencies. One of the important objective of this policy is to encourage individuals to make provision for their and their spouse old age, to encourage families to take care of older family members. And uh, another important aspect of this policy is that it is very comprehensively covering various aspects that requires attention on the part of the government so that with the proper programs and schemes, they have to be implemented on a war footing so as to see that all the elderly who are in need of and also the various roles that the stakeholders have to play in response to the government initiatives for taking care of the elderly in our society. Though the pro policy has come into existence from 1999, efforts are very much required to highlight these points where the national policy has brought out very important aspects which requires to be to take it further in the communities among the various uh, stakeholders so that they are all very aware of the rights and uh, all the rights of the older persons and also to see that uh, their uh, aspects related to human rights angle can be addressed. For instance, their independency, the dignity, their participation in the family, neighborhood, community and society are all very, very important for us to address. In this sense, besides the policy, we need a specific time schedules for implementation of each of these points and also we need to work out an appropriate action plan that needs to be taken up by various stakeholders so that each of these specific aspects that have come in the policy can be implemented properly so that all the elderly can be the partners in the process of development and also they also benefit because it is they who have contributed when they are in the working age population and now it is their turn being elderly they should be seen that they also become partners in the ongoing developmental projects and programs and at the same time those who are not able to contribute physically they also can be taken care of by various welfare measures so that given the heterogeneity of population in India, all the issues through appropriate policies, programs and schemes and also the social security schemes which are there, which are implemented by the government and also by various non-governmental organizations can be taken up and to see that they are effectively implemented so that furthermore innovative programs and schemes can be worked out for the benefit of the elderly so that the intergenerational bonds that are required will be promoted once the targeted 
elderly population get the benefit of these social security schemes, the young members who are the main caregivers can also feel that they are eased out of that particular component of the needs that are required for their elderly if they are taken care of and it will promote the harmony among the families, communities and the society at large. So these are very important when we are addressing the social security for the elderly in India.